Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, tragic day as we continue our coverage of just what happened over here at the King Superstore in Boulder. Ten people killed yesterday afternoon, including a Boulder police officer. At this hour, we're waiting to hear more from Boulder police. They're planning to hold a press conference at 830 this morning. And until then, we have team coverage going over what we do know. And we'll also be hearing from experts about the resources available for those in the community who've been impacted by this. It's very emotional. It surely is, that's for sure. We should say that there is a person in custody. Maybe we'll learn more about that coming up at that news conference uh, at 8.30 this morning. We do want to go over what happened, though. Let's start by the location of this King Supers. Uh, show you where it is. It's, a, it's been here a long time. It's a very popular King Supers. It's on the south side of the city. It's at the corner of Table Mesa Drive and South Broadway by the university, just about a mile uh, south of the university. And uh, a lot of students I know live in this area and also shop here. Uh, this is what we know this morning. As we said, one suspect in custody, he was taken to the hospital uh, for treatment. He had a leg injury when they took him in. Once again, Boulder police say 10 people killed during the shooting Monday afternoon. Uh, and uh, we don't know if those were employees or if they were shoppers. One of those people killed, though, was Boulder police officer Eric Talley. He was the first to respond to the store in uh, after the 911 calls started coming in about 3 o'clock. Officer Talley, 51 years old, he has been with the department a little more than a decade, we are told. And as we mentioned, he was the first on the scene. Nine News reporter John Glasgow is over at Boulder Police Headquarters this morning uh, to talk a little bit more about the officer that we lost yesterday, John. Good morning, Gary. Uh, Boulder police say that uh, Officer Talley's bravery will never be forgotten. You can see here that there is a show of respect as they've put flowers on a patrol car outside of the Boulder police headquarters. We did speak with Officer Talley's father last night. He says that he wasn't surprised when he heard that he was the first on the scene. He says that he loved helping people and that he loved his family. Last night, a heartbreaking moment of silence as metro area law enforcement agencies lined their patrol cars for a procession to honor one of their fallen. Tally was one of the first officers at the scene of the King Supers where he was fatally shot. Boulder Police Chief Maris Harold calling Tally's actions heroic at a news conference last night. Homer Talley, Eric's father, tells us that he was a father of seven children. The oldest is 20 years old. His father said that Officer Talley was working to become a drone operator because he thought it would be safer. Members of the community also paid their respects to Officer Talley at last night's procession. I, I'm standing here on this curb to show my respects to the men and women that have lost their lives tonight. I don't care how cold it is, I'll stand out here and I, I will salute to that officer when they pass by. Just heartbreaking. Tally is the sixth Boulder police officer to be killed in the line of duty. The district attorney said that there'll be an extensive investigation to bring justice to the lives that were lost on Monday. We are expecting to learn a little bit more about this shooting at 8.30 this morning. Boulder police said that they'll have a news conference here. And we, of course, will be carrying that on 9 News. Gary? Yeah, John, boy, that procession last night, that was something to witness. I mean, that was that was pretty impressive. I don't know, 50, 60 maybe police cars uh, in a row, and uh, it was just really emotional, I thought. Yeah, and they waited all day, too, to make sure that they were part of it, just out of respect for one of the fallen, and it's uh, awful. We did speak with some of the officers here this morning who are still trying to comprehend what's happened here in Boulder. All right, John, thanks for that. Appreciate it. I want to bring in Eddie Randall. Eddie has been uh, going through the video of the witnesses that we talked to yesterday. There were so many people in that store and what they went through was just terrific. Yeah, and we had a, a team of reporters out here just, you know, being able to ca capture some of that witness sound and listen to those stories. You know, we heard from people who uh, own nearby businesses who say that their employees and them had to hide in bathrooms, lock the doors. We also heard from an elderly man who wasn't sure if his wife was in the store. He said he knew that she went to a store, but wasn't oh. sure what store she went to. We did 
were able to hear that they were later reunited. But That's good, another yeah. interview that comes to mind is the one Steve Stager got where he talked to a grandfather who told us that his two granddaughters were inside of that store ages 12 and 13 and they were in there with their father. They were here for a routine or for a COVID-19 shot for their father to get one. And, you know, that's something that we all deal with now. That's a, right. just a normal thing, you know, coming to the store, doing something like that, picking up groceries. And that grandfather painted the picture of what his granddaughters and his son-in-law had to go through. We're gonna take a listen to some of that interview right now. Take a listen. And there was shooting and he saw it and got the girls down. They ran and hid upstairs in a coat closet for an hour in the coats. And then they were communicating with my daughter through his phone, texting. And then the cops came in through the roof. I'm shaking. I'm, I'm so glad they're safe. Hmm. Shaken and safe. Uh, but, you know, he talks about happy that they're safe. But just hearing him go through that, you know, uh, I don't have children, but I can only imagine what a grandfather, what a parent is, is, is wondering or dealing with knowing that their kids are witnessing something like this. And sadly, this is something that, you know, we've all reported on before. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah. I've only lived here for four and a half years in the state of Colorado, but I remember reporting on the shooting that happened at the Walmart in Thornton in 2017, and then the STEM School Highlands Ranch. And now this that just happened on Monday, you know, it's something that we have all dealt with before. But what we all can agree on is that these communities in Colorado all come together. You were talking about how we saw a lot of that, you know, happen yesterday. So many people coming together to make sure that they can, you know, let people know that, you know, we're here for them. Yeah. And, you know, social media, we talk about how horrible it is all the time. Yeah. It pretty much is. But it can do a lot of good, too. And, and yesterday we saw that come through when the community came together, especially after they learned of the police officer. Absolutely. Eddie, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So King Supers, as we mentioned, uh, they're not saying if it was employees or shoppers, the nine that were killed other than the police officer. But they did, uh, they did release a statement late last night. I want to read you part of that statement. It says, quote, we are horrified and deeply saddened by the senseless violence that had occurred in our store. The entire King Supers family offers our thoughts, prayers, support to our associates, customers, and the first responders who bravely responded to this tragic situation. Goes on to say, we will continue to cooperate with law enforcement and our store will remain closed during the police investigation. We are also getting word from some of the elected leaders in Colorado about this tragedy. Governor Jared Polis was tweeting the uh, whole afternoon yesterday about it. Then he released a statement saying, in part, my heart breaking as we watch this unspeakable event unfold in our Boulder community. My prayers are with our fellow Coloradans in this time of sadness and grief. Of course, the governor is from Boulder, so this is his home community. President Joe Biden has not uh, responded directly to uh, the tragedy, however, his press secretary put out a statement last night saying that he had been briefed on the shooting and will be kept up to date with additional developments. And uh, he has already said, uh, the government, federal government has already said that they'll be aiding local authorities in this investigation. Yesterday, we did see FBI agents and uh, ATF agents over here helping, uh, helping with the investigation. So. It's gonna go on, we think, for at least five days at this King Superstore, so this area, area Natasha, is probably gonna be cordoned off for quite a while. Yeah, and it looks like also Boulder is now on accident alert as well, uh, so um, you wanna avoid that area if you can. Uh, it's, it's a senseless tragedy. It's something that's hitting hard for so many across the state and the country. You know, after going through several mass shootings, it's hard each and every time. So here's some of your thoughts and prayers that you're sending to the victims this morning, specifically the one who's we do know Officer Eric Talley, an important time to come together. And if you'd like to make a direct impact in helping the victims and their families, you can. The Colorado Healing Fund is now activated for this shooting. It's a nonprofit that supports those affected by the shooting. And their donation information is on our website, 9news.com. CU Boulder classes will be in session today. The university canceled all of its classes that started at 5.30 and later last night. The shooting happening just a couple miles away from campus. 
The Buffs did tweet, we are shocked and saddened by the shooting that has rocked the Boulder community Monday afternoon and our hearts go out to those impacted. And then they did list some resources for students as well. Boulder High School went on secure lockout during the shooting. Boulder Valley School District is on spring break, but the school district says a few athletic teams were at the school. The students and coaches had to stay inside until they got the all clear. Other schools in the area include Summit Middle School, Bear Creek Elementary School, Southern Hills Middle School and Fairview High School, again, all on spring break.